to be uh, at the end of the school year, everybody gathers in the gym, we have a little dance, an end of the school dance. Now it comes um, proms. I'm reading the Post Gazette over the weekend. The price of proms. Uh, Mount Lebanon High School is spending $30,000 for the senior prom. That's $60 per pupil, and not all the pupils go to the proms, as we all know this. Uh, this is, uh, this is kind of nuts. So I thought we'd talk to our marketing trends expert, Dr. Audrey Gusky of Duquesne University. Just back from, uh, well, back from the marathon. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Back from Rome, back from Paris. You travel around the world more than I do. I've been traveling a bit lately, yeah. Rome was okay? Rome was wonderful, magnificent. I saw the Pope. Me and 220 other people. Oh, I was wondering. 220,000 <laughs> other people, yeah. <laughs> All right, so what's the deal? I mean, did you go to your high school prom? I did. I went to my senior prom. All right, where was it? It was right at the high school. I mean, that's where we had it. Was The dinner was there. And you're not the that was, old. And I went to Montour. You're not old. Uh, I will never say how old I am. But Montour, I'm not asking you, but you're not old. I can tell. Montour is spending $14,000 for the prom. They ain't holding that one in the gym. I have a feeling they, didn't, they spent a fraction of that when I went in the 70s. So it was... Did you get dressed up? Very dressed up. I mean, that was the big deal. You bought a nice dress, probably 50 or $60. The guys rented tuxes, probably about 25 or $30 in those days. Uh, yeah. You borrowed your brother-in-law's car because he had a Corvette and you looked cool in it. And you went to the prom and that was it? See, now I went to my junior prom, but I didn't go to my senior prom. I think I had a conflict. Mm -hmm. I think something else more important was going on. Plus, I wasn't sure if I had a date. But I had a date to the junior prom, and the junior prom was held at one of these... Um, uh, and I, I, this was in suburban Philadelphia. One of these, and I'm trying to, I don't know, one of these halls. Mm -hmm. Not a fire hall, a little bit. It's something that you would hold big events at. Sure. Well, nowadays okay. things have obviously changed because what you're looking at is um, high schools going to, if it's not on the Gateway Clipper, you're renting a major expensive restaurant or you're having all kinds of plush events, very expensive. And the kids are spending tremendous amounts of money too. They're spending upwards of $1,000 each to go to the prom because they're renting limos and they're getting it all videotaped and they're buying very expensive gowns. And, you know, I think there's a couple reasons for that. Well, all right, well, I want to, and I want to talk to you folks out there in, in television land, and I want you to tell me uh, did, how much you spent on your senior prom. Did you rent a limo? Did you rent the video camera? Is it? Do you really think that's necessary? Is that in these days? Is it important to rent a limo for your kids for their senior prom? What's wrong with having it at the gym at the high school? Uh, I, I don't know. Now tell me, three 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 P C N C. Audrey's going to tell us the reasons why we're doing all this. Now. Well, I think first of all, the economy is so extremely strong. People have money to burn. And so because they're healthy, wealthy, and wise, and people have this extra income, they're going to spend it on their kids. We've got a lot of two-income families, and so parents feel guilty. They're not home a lot, so this is one way to splurge on their children. But I think the most important reason is people want to say, hey, you know, my kids rented this big limo. We spent $500 on a gown that we had at a special designer shop. I think it's one-upmanship. You know, you want to do better than your neighbors, and each school district wants to do better than the other school district. So I think it's a matter of just being bigger and better and more fun and more exciting than the other. See, it was great. My junior prom, it was super. I got to use Dad's car. <laughs> He was very trepidatious that night, but it was the big time, and it was great. I got to drive, pick up, uh, pick up the babe, and then head off to the junior prom. Uh, I, I'll tell you what, I got a notice from my youngest son's, he, he goes to middle school, and they're going to have a dinner, mm -hmm. because they're leaving middle school, going up to high school next year. So they're going to have this dinner, they're going to hold it at a fire hall, but they had to set limits. They had to go home, send this note home to the parents saying, uh, we're not getting dressed up for this. Mm -hmm. No limousines. Limousine, limousines for eighth graders. You gotta be kidding me. No limousines, none of this, none of that. It's just a little get together dinner, which I think is fine. Mm -hmm. um, but but uh, spending $30,000, now I guess a part of that's recoup because you pay, right? You've gotta pay tickets uh, right. to go to the prom. And that's pretty steep too. Probably on average 50 to $100 per couple which, you know, might be expensive for a lot of kids. You've got to keep in mind, kids are working nowadays. More than half of the high school students are out there, not just part-time jobs, full-time jobs after school. So they've got money to burn as well. 
Your, uh, your daughter was in here last time. I, I, I saw her from across the... Uh, she's only in eighth grade, so we haven't started any of this Well, yet. what are you thinking about? Well, she's got a sports banquet to, to go to in a couple of weeks, and all the kids are buying these nice, very nice dresses that they're spending quite a bit of money for junior high. So, I, you know, it starts out at the very young age, and it continues and continues and continues. Well, so how are you going to deal with it? Are you going to... Uh, no limo for the sports banquet, Well, right? we're not doing a limo, but we did go out and buy a nice new dress. Well, you got a so, nice new dress. The kids are growing up. Yeah, but when you look at the prices of some of these... When you start getting into three figures for a dress for a, for a know, sports banquet. For a little sports banquet. And then you start wondering, wait a minute, there's something wrong with this picture here. Mary, hi, you're on uh, Hansberger Live. Hello, Mary. Hello. You're on the air. Uh, my comment is on the limo, renting of the limos. I encouraged my daughter and her friends to, in, to rent the limo because it gave me and the other parents security that the kids were not going to be involved with the drinking and driving. Do you think, um, how old's your daughter? Uh, she was 18 when she went to her senior prom. Was she drinking at 18, do you know? Oh, I know that kids are. No, but was your daughter drinking? Was my daughter drinking? Not for the prom. But did she drink? Uh, at 18, did your daughter drink? Not to my knowledge. All right. She's okay. 19 now, and I know, going to pit, and I know now that she does drink. Hmm. Well, that's illegal, you know. Uh, I know it's illegal, but how can I stop it? She's probably you're... going down to Kumpi's with a fake ID. We talked to that guy last week. Uh, all right. Well, okay. That's a good point. The Safety limo thing is, is a good point. Sure. And also, when you have three or four couples in this limo squeezed in, the cost probably isn't that much. And it might be a security thing for parents because you know that the kids aren't going to escape somewhere. You know, that's not a bad idea. And, and I guess since the recent figures that we've seen show that, uh, especially when kids are driving together in cars. Mm hmm you know, not just the kid behind the wheel, but has three or four kids in the car. That's when they're likely to have an accident. Yeah, because they're not paying attention. Or no drinking. Yeah. Steve, you're on Hansberger Live. Good morning. Hi, how's it going? All right, Steve, what's up? Uh, not much. I was just calling because uh, of the whole parent angle that was going on. Yeah. Um, a lot of the people I know, like, I, I just graduated last year from Seneca. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the people I know have paid, like, the kids have paid for, like, everything. Okay. Like, just from their jobs and stuff. Um... And I think, uh, like, the reason that I think that most of them get limos and, you know, the expensive dresses and, and you know, the flowers and the dinners and everything else is just because they want to make it special, you know, for, for their date or whatever. I don't um, think, I'm not having a problem with that, and I don't know if I have a problem with anything. I'm just, I was alarmed that one school district was spending $30,000 for oh, the senior prom. See, that's. That, that, I think, is ridiculous. Did you go to the senior prom? Yeah, I went. All right. Did, and we did, spent... I can't. I think we spent. I think it was like three or four grand. Three or four thousand. Yeah. You. Yeah. Personally. No. 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 You mean the school? Sorry. No. All together. <laughs> all your friends, you say? Yeah. Wow. And it was mostly on tickets because we had it right at the school. Mostly on what? You spent it mostly on what? On tickets and uh, the food for the because we had it right at the school. Okay. Oh, that's good then. Yeah. Did you have a problem with that? No, I didn't mind it at all. You know, Would you rather done something on the Gateway Clipper? Yeah, most people didn't mind it, you know. Really? Hmm. Cause, and, and so you had something special, and you had something special at the school, which is a nice thing. Steve brings yeah. up a good point, because this is sort of, for seniors, their last big fling, and it's a part of going from, in a sense, your youth to a bit of your adulthood. And so people want to remember this and make it special. Yeah. All right, we have some more calls. We're going to take a break and uh, get to your calls if you want to come in and join and tell me about your senior prom. And uh, this guy had it at Seneca Valley. He had it at the school. And, you know, having it at the school is not a bad idea because you're leaving that school. It's a great deal. And uh, so there we go. And we have nothing against limousines. Cause I, and the more I'm thinking about it, the more I really like the idea of renting a limousine. We'll be back. Hansberger Live in a moment. The exclusive transportation provider for... talking uh, proms what about your prom how much did you spend is too much and and uh, there's it is a time Audrey Gusky Duquesne University marketing professor tells it's a special time and you want exactly. it to be special you want to remember but you remembered yours and it was held at the uh, well of course everybody remembers it. you want to uh, take pictures so that we have the mementos and, and you're with your friends and you're enjoying it but I think wherever the kids went it would be special because it is one of their last times at the school Betty you're on Hansberger live good morning Good morning. I enjoy your show so much. Thank you, Betty. But I'm going to let you down real easy. <laughs> My prom, I think the tickets were ten dollars. Yeah. Well, when was that, Betty? Forty-six. All right. It's right. a lot and of money in those days. I went 
with my best girlfriend's boyfriend's best friend because he had broken up with his girlfriend. Okay. So we were friends. Yeah. So after we had the prom in the junior high, uh, you know, in the uh, oh, the gym, and then on the we were all supposed to meet and go to the morgue. But we got lost somehow. Yo. So we ended up having hot dogs and Coke on the way home. All right, but it was memorable, obviously. It was. No pictures. Flowers, yes. No pictures. Betty, did just you say morgue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to touch on that in a minute. I, I just, she just brought this up. I'm going okay. to ask about this. Go ahead, Betty. Yeah. Well, right. no pictures. Well, I don't remember anybody ever taking pictures. Did they have pictures, pictures in 46? 1946. Mm-hmm. You did? Yeah. They had cameras that you could actually take pictures? Well, sure. I didn't know they had photography was invented in those they days. Had, they had pictures when I was born. All right. I'm kidding around with you, Betty. I know. <laughs> All right. Thanks. And my sister, now let me tell you, she's 19 months older than I. She went to the same gym, but they had a live band, and it was uh, Les Brown. Les Brown and the band of renown. Thanks, Betty. Now, and I know this is a, this. She just jogged my memory, and I think it's still a big deal. A parent, you've got to call me. Somebody's got to call me and tell me about this. Refresh my memory. What the tradition is? You go to your prom, and then you go to the morgue. There was a newspaper article about this a couple of years ago. Tell somebody's got to jog my. Why? When did this tradition start? Why? And Have what you ever are heard they of this? No, and what are they doing at the moment? You go down there, and there used to be a section, I, I think there used to be a section, where you could actually view some of the corpses that came in. Oh, my. Uh, it, uh, Brian and Zanka, our producer's telling us there's a balcony that runs around the morgue. Uh-huh. Get Cyril Wecht on the phone. See if we can still go down <laughs> there. I, do you still do this? Do you still go down? Call me. Let me know. Somebody who's done this. But uh, the, 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 well, I don't know how this got started. But after the prom, you'd go to the morgue. And hang out. Go to this balcony. Yeah, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. Brian seems to know about it because he says the balcony's gone. You can't do this anymore. Oh, did obviously you go, Brian, Brian did you go to the morgue in your prom, Brian? No, but that's what the big stink was. Uh, several uh, years ago, they closed it, renovated it, and everyone was complaining. Uh, no more prom tours at the morgue. Fred, you're on Hans Berger Live. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. Um, but just a couple of things I wanted to say. Um, it's not necessarily much as the prom anymore because I went to the prom in 1994, and I went to a city, um, a city high school. Yeah. And it seemed like city high schools don't have the budgeting that some of the suburban high schools have for the yeah, prom. Yeah, you're probably right. So um, our prom was at the Green Tree Marriott. Which isn't too bad. Pardon? Which isn't too bad a place to have it. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. And we they have it. Green Tree Marriott. Well, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. a good place to have it. Yeah. And we also had something. We also had something that's called an after prom. Okay, the after prom. A lot of, lot of schools these days are having the after prom uh, as a method of trying to make sure the kids uh, stay controlled, don't get drunk, and mm -hmm. don't go out and kill sure. themselves in a car, and the prom will go till dawn. Mm -hmm. Usually the after prom goes till dawn. Right there, Fred? Um, I believe our prom was from 7 to 11, and the after prom was from like 12 to 2 or 12 to 3, something like that. Right. And then some schools have picnics. Did you have a picnic afterward, Fred? Uh, we had a picnic at Kennywood Park on Saturday. Yeah. Did you go to the morgue? No, we didn't go to the board. That's the damnest thing I ever heard. <laughs> I know! Isn't that something? All right, Fred, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Dolores apparently knows about the morgue. Tell us, Dolores, good morning. Well, I graduated in the old days. Okay. That, well, that's apparently that's when this uh, began, so... Yeah, 1947. All right. From a high school in Cleveland, Ohio. All right. And about 15 couples went to the morgue. The, the Pittsburgh, the Allegheny County morgue? Pardon? The morgue up there in Ohio or here? In Cleveland. So this is not just a Pittsburgh thing. Oh, no. It was really the thing to do those days. Why? Uh, don't ask me. <laughs> it's another one of those things where one kid does it, and therefore everyone has to do it. And each group, it seems, for about four or five years did that. I see. And that. on top of that, we <laughs> went to the prom on a streetcar. Well, okay, oh, yeah, but, 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 but did you see dead people? Like, like, uh, Hasley, Asley, uh, uh, did you see dead people? They Haley let Osmond. us see two, but uh, only they uncovered the faces only, and then they went into explanations on how they do autopsies. So they told you what's going on with these people? We just stood there. <laughs> and they let the, they uncovered the faces? 
Yeah, they uncovered the faces, and they were ones that had not been identified, and they had had on file. But some of some got sick, some fainted. I think that's a very romantic way to end. Yeah, the I mean, song. come yeah. on! It's supposed to be. I mean, give me a break here. I don't know what fun that was, but that's what everybody uh, did those days. See, I wanted to make out with some girl in my prom night. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. Now, I didn't go to the senior prom, but the, la the graduation night, you stay out all night. And uh, oh, we didn't. my we goal didn't was to hang out with some babe and make out most of the night. <laughs> what I, I'm not going to the morgue. It's not a make out joint. Yeah. And we went in our formal gowns. <sighs> okay. Well, I guess I guess the bizarre, the, it's bizarro. I guess the more bizarre it is, the better it is. Uh, would you? Would I go to the prom? Would no. you have done Would that? I go to the morgue? No. No. But I've done that, no. I ended up marrying the guy I went to the prom with, though. Did you really? I did. Yes. So, must have had a so good time. they made out that night, huh? We, we did. That's what I wanted to do on my prom. Stick with us. Hans Berger Live. More coming up. All right, Audrey Gusky is here, and she's a marketing director, director of marketing. She teaches marketing at Duquesne University. You so see, you're getting ready to start up uh, summer classes? Summer session starting already this week. No rest for the weary because we just finished the term at Duquesne last week. Yeah. We're starting the new summer session. Not uh, you're a good professor. I mean, I'd enjoy being in your class. You wouldn't yell at me. It's not a hard work. Fred, thing. you would be a trouble student. I can say I would that. be a <laughs> huge, big <laughs> trouble I student. I would put you right in the front and keep <laughs> an eye exactly on you. Exactly yeah. right. We're talking about proms and uh, the cost of proms. Is it worth it? The trends in proms and and and. Uh, 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 Tim has a disaster story for us. Tim, welcome to Hansburger Live. How you doing, Fred? All right, what's hey, the... I'll tell you what, my prom was like the morgue. <laughs> <laughs> my tuxedo almost didn't make it. The girl I was with, I didn't want to be with. The girl I wanted to be with was with somebody else. Well, what did you invite this girl for? Why did you ask her? I, I wanted, you know, you had to go, to, everybody had to go to the prom. That's, if you didn't go, you were, you were an oddball, you know. So I spent the uh, money. Uh, I wish I'd had that money back. <laughs> uh, <on. laughs> we, we had it in the gym at the school, and then we went after that. We went to my friend's house, if I remember correctly, and we polished off a little bit of whiskey, and uh, that was the extent of our prom. But there you uh, go, Wayne's World revisited. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks, Tim. Okay, uh, you polished off a little bit of whiskey. I mean, uh, I get for for kids. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to go through this. I'm going to have oh, to Oh, I go went through it with this. my son. I'm going to have to go through yeah. this. I mean, it's like, it's Liberation Day. Well, the kids are 17 and 18. They figure they're grown up. They know yeah. what they want. They're mature adults. They don't know they nothing, do they? Uh, we know they know nothing. That's right. Yeah. But then we thought we knew everything, too. Uh, well, that's exactly right. But yeah. it's, it's Liberation Day, right? It is, yeah. And, and it's special for the boys as well as the girls. My son rented the tux. He borrowed his, his uncle's nice car and took off and had a wonderful, wonderful time at Chartiers Valley High School a couple years ago. And my recollection is that they had it at the school. They stayed at the school the whole time, which was nice. That's the after nice. prom, the picnic, mm -hmm. the day after at uh, Kenny Woods, so it was a nice tradition. And, and so what we're saying, our conclusion here in all this is that it's, it's uh, proms are good. Right, because it, it, is, it is a tradition, it is something that people do remember. It's the closure of an era of people's lives. But I think what tends to happen in society is does for almost everything Americans do, we want it bigger and better every year. We want our kids to have a better prom than we had. We want to spend more money than they did. And, or we want to spend more money for them than, than we did for ourselves. And, and so in reality, it just is, in a sense, going to be out of hand. You know, you look at the expense that parents yeah. are going through, but uh, as we said earlier, people have the money, that, uh, as, as uh, some of the kids have called in and said, they spent money themselves. The Cheap money they date have. going to the morgue. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Okay. On the line with us right now, Allegheny County Coroner, Dr. Cyril Weck. Doctor, welcome to the program. Hi, how you doing? Doctor, what's going on here? And I remember this in a paper a few, a few years ago. Wh tell me about this tradition of going to the morgue after your prom. Well, uh, it started long before proms. Uh, it started when you were a young kid, if you grew up where I did. Um, um, the, the little <laughs> we little kids, is, whenever we first uh, started to uh, walk into downtown Pittsburgh from the Lower Hill District up, or, you know, where I lived around yeah. Mercy Hospital, and you would sneak in. Kids weren't supposed to get in, of course, and. Um, you try to come in the late, you know, late evening when uh, the deputies were not paying attention, and then sneak in. Um, and then later on, um, 
you know, uh, high school kids, uh, college kids, uh, proms, uh, dances, affairs, uh, fraternity, uh, hell weeks, uh, when you send pledges around to do things and so on. Well, what first, you got to understand, um, back um, a long time ago, um, uh, oh, uh, we're talking now, the building here uh, was moved uh, uh, some uh, uh, 80 uh, years or so ago. So remember, this is pre-television. Right. And uh, in fact, uh, the, when we're radio, I think it was pre-radio, wasn't it? Yeah. So how did you, how, how could you know if, if uh, Uncle Ned uh, liked to do a lot of drinking and then come home at night, how would you know, uh, you know where Uncle Ned was? Yeah. Well, maybe he was, maybe he had gotten knocked off Down or the, morgue, yeah. the river or something. So how would you uh, find out? You go, one of the things you do is, uh, in addition to, I guess, contacting the police, you'd go to the morgue. The, what they had, uh, Fred, were two large um, sloping um, showcase Areas as you walked into what we called uh, the chapel, okay. which was three stories high, by the way, went all the way up to the ceiling of this building. And uh, I don't mean to be gross, uh, but so you can picture this properly, uh, just think when you go into a uh, meat market, you know, and meats are on display uh, in refrigerated areas behind glass windows, and that's the way it was. Oh. And the bodies then were rolled in from the other side. Um, um, where uh, examinations were done and bodies restored, and then they were placed uh, on individual cards covered with sheets, and only the face uh, showed. And then you would go in and you'd look to see if Uncle Ned uh, was there. Now, I mean, but this, now we're talking about people back in the 40s and 50s. I mean, would yeah. we just let anybody in there to want to go well, in? Well, you weren't. Well, the, supposedly you had to get permission, and uh, you know you had to be looking for something. Yeah. In fact, um, if you were adults. Nobody challenged you. It was only kids uh, that they would, if they caught us, that you know, that just uh, uh, chase us out. Of Did you used to do that, Doctor Weck? <laughs> yeah. Is this what inspired yeah. you to get into? It would, it would be. I was. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be incredible? To say, you know, from that time on, Fred, I said one day I'm <laughs> going to be the court. <laughs> that would be a, a darn lie. Um, no, I never thought about um, um, that at that time. But you know, and and again, uh, I mean, you can imagine sometimes with a fresh body where blood was still dripping, oh, and God. boy, to see that, you know, when you're an eight, nine, ten year old kid, my God, you know, that was uh, yeah. spooky and scary uh, to go in there. But that was the story. Now, um, on January one of nineteen sixty six, Bill Hunt was elected November sixty five. And uh, he was a coroner then sworn in, and I came over as chief deputy, chief forensic pathologist. On January 1, that chapel was closed. All right. So as of that date, um, uh, nobody uh, could get in there uh, for any purpose because identifications were then made privately, discreetly, and in good taste. And um, uh, much of that area has been captured for other purposes. Storage is still accomplished on one side. But uh, it's sequestered. We also have um, um, captured some of the space, and we hope uh, we, we would, if we were going to stay in this building, try to capture uh, more space that goes all the way up to the uh, ceiling. Dr. Weck. A lovely, lovely chapel, by the way, with some great stained glass windows in the rear of the building on 3rd Avenue. Uh, right. And I don't know whatever happened to them. Dr. Weck, thanks for clearing this okay. up. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. There we go. We got uh, all that we wanted to know and more. Yeah. Every, you know, that, that's always a, a deal. All right. Thank you, Dr. Weck. Uh, and thank you for coming in. My pleasure, Professor. Fred. Now, listen. Yes. You ran the marathon yesterday. I did, What are you indeed. doing that for? Well, it was tough one. This was my third one and I wanted to do it in the year 2000 and I'd been training for probably about a year and I just, I never stopped. I kept running. It wasn't fast, but I, I finished. I was the one that kept running You really along. enjoy this? Um, I do enjoy it. Come on, tell me the truth. Uh, tell me the truth. Between mile 22 and 23, yeah. I wasn't that happy, but when I crossed that finish line and saw all my friends and family there, it all was right. a thrill. It was thanks a rush. For, thanks for coming in. Have me again, Fred. I will have you again. No problem. Yeah. All right, Hans Berger Live. More straight ahead, including your phone calls. Don't go away.